Good afternoon, this is Wayne with Digging Diesel. This is a follow-up video. Uh, if you check it out on one of my earlier videos, I installed this 12-volt AC unit on the back of my EGT QNT excavator. Um, got into summertime, got out, was using it a little bit, and it wanted to fire off an error code about every minute, minute and a half that it was running. I think it's a D2. We'll get in there here in a second and take a look at it. Um, but the error code comes back to low voltage. This is something that I was you know, concern might happen just due to the fact that these AC units pull anywhere between 40, 45, 50 amps, uh, something in that ballpark. It just depends on the manufacturer. And uh, the battery just won't sustain it. Alternator, it won't sustain it. I think it's a 30 amp that comes in these. Uh, so today we're going to go ahead and install one that's a, I think it was a 60 amp that I purchased off of Amazon. It looks like it should be a direct fit. Um, I'll show you there's some paperwork in there they do a test run on it just so we can see what kind of uh, amperage it does run so let's jump into it all right hopefully you all can hear me I went ahead and I turned it on as I mentioned in the last video it reads in Celsius I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the mode right now and then I will adjust the temperature down on it turn the fan up to a five let it run here for a little bit and then it should pop up that error code and trigger it here shortly. All right, and there's the error when it comes up. It's a B-2. When I pulled it in the book, it basically said that it was a voltage or under 12 volts, but I really think it's coming from the amperage draw um, that is causing it to happen. Let's go around back and uh, get looking at the alternator. Here's the alternator that I purchased off of Amazon. I'll put a link in the description below. But here's the part number on it. It was just over $100. I think it was maybe $105, uh, something to that effect. Let me open it up here. We'll take a look at the test sheet on it as well. Because these, they always run them. And on this alternator, the maximum output was 900 watts. The maximum output, um, as far as the amperage goes, under full load was 69 amps voltage regulator set point is at 14.65 um, and this was 1350 rpm so with this diesel engine it runs typically its happy spots around 2500 2800 rpms but just looking at it from the outside the size looked to be correct on it uh, most important thing was the plug a lot of the ones that I was looking at they had it was more of a square plug but mine is equipped with one that has this rectangular plug. So let's go around back and we'll get it installed. As far as the size goes, these look virtually identical. Uh, when I was doing all the measurements, just trying to confirm that I ordered the right one, everything looked to be identical on it. And now that I do have it here in person, that just confirms it. And you come around back here, plugs, power line, everything looks consistent. Uh, I know normally it's just going to be uh, on the adjuster bolt here. I know that's given some people some grief. Hopefully this is a direct fit. It'll make it a lot easier. That way you don't have to custom make a bracket to make it work. It's a little bit snug in here, but hopefully I can get the right angle so I can show you everything. Uh, the upper adjuster bolt here, it's 12 millimeter. And then the lower actual kind of hinge where it, uh, the center point off it, that's 12 millimeter as well. So go ahead and break this free. Might want to go a little bigger than a quarter inch ratchet, but it was enough to get it get it off of here. A ratcheting box wrench on this might work a little bit better, but this is getting the job done. One thing I'm curious about is this is actually threaded into the alternator itself. Um, we'll see if this bolt actually works on the threads for the new alternator. I'll just grab a crescent wrench to go ahead and take the power lead off. All right, and then on this power lead, like I mentioned, I'm just gonna take it off with the crescent wrench. Uh, just a little piece of advice, disconnect the battery. That way you don't ground this out um, or get it covered in something. Just to protect it while you're doing the swap out. Alternator's a little bit warm from when I had that engine running there a minute ago. <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and wrap it in a rag here just to make sure, like I said, disconnect the battery's always uh, a better safety measure and when you pull this out there is a spacer down here make sure you don't lose that it's gonna have to go back in uh, with the other alternator and there's the spacer I was talking about so hang on to that in the hardware and we'll see if the new one fits before I actually put it in I just wanted to compare them side by side just to see how similar they were uh, from the back here you can see it's 
almost identical. I, only difference I see is just the opening here over the cooling fins. Uh, the plug itself harness looks the same. And then from the side here, they looked super similar when I held them up. Everything was where it needed to be. The biggest thing I was concerned with was the placement of the pulley just to make sure that, that was going to be in line uh, with the lower crank pulley that's already on the engine. Only difference that I did see was on this lower mount here. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it, but it's just slightly larger on uh, the original one. And this is the spacer that we took out we're going to put back in. Uh, but in order for the distance to be the same on that hinge point, I'm just going to go ahead and put just a single flat washer in there and that's going to get the width where it's identical. So hopefully that'll get everything lined up uh, and the belt is lined up correctly that way and then we won't have any wear issues. So let's go over to the machine, put it in. Got it in here with the spacer. I'm going to go ahead and uh, get it started down here on that hinge point. And the hardware, that's going to be exactly the same down here um, because it actually goes into the block itself right here. And I did check uh, over on the bench in the upper hardware, the thread is exactly the same. So I can use the same bolt over again. All right, have it hand tight now. Only thing I'm seeing is it is rubbing a little bit here on this point on the upper hinge. We'll see if I can kind of bump it across here. And it'll clear here, it's just on the upper portions. Okay, it looks like the spacing on these bolts is just a little bit wider than the original one. So this is bolted in here, but I can see the threads up here uh, where they're sitting above the bracket. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this bracket off, see if it can be modified in any way to get it to work. I think really all I need to do is just put, swing it up a little bit. It's just two bolts on the upper tensioner arm. So they are 10 millimeter. I'm gonna go ahead and get them off here. Let's see what we can do. I don't think we need to change the lower hinge point. I think if we can just oval this out a little bit, that will get me enough height to go from here up to about there. And I think it, I might need to do a little notch on the top here because uh, on the actual water jacket up top here, it is gonna get into that. So a little bit of shaving here, open up this hole here. I think that'll be the ticket. I think the best way to oblong this out to be able to gain that extra height here is gonna be just to use a step bit. Uh, there is a little bit of movement on these that it can adjust up and down. Uh, it was in the lowest position, but when I played with it, bringing it up, brought it about a half inch, um, but I need at least an inch out of it. So what I'm gonna do is oblong the hole out. Now that I have that anchored down onto the block here, we'll go ahead and open up this hole. I used a file just to finish cleaning it up, get me a little extra here. Uh, last thing I need to do is take that little notch out of the corner here. That way it doesn't rub uh, up on that upper uh, water jacket. Now I'm just going to use a flap grinder. It should make quick work of it. Don't want to go too far. I don't want to actually get into the bolt opening here. Just in case this ever backs off, I don't need things to swing and go crazy in there. So. Let's go give this a try. I'm just gonna do these bolts hand tight. That way they still have a little bit of movement and then I'll move the alternator up, see if we can get that bolt in. And if so, I will get everything snugged up past there. And that looks like that did the trick. I can see the bolt hole there. So let me go ahead and get that in there, get it started. And we can snug everything up, get the belt on there and give it a try. All right. I'm looking down the side of the pulley here, everything looks to be lined up well, so. Tighten it up, get these wires back on there, and we'll give it a test. All right, just like that, everything's buttoned up. Let's go inside, fire it up, and we'll uh, see how everything looks. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on now. I know previously it would go a minute, maybe a minute and a half before it would give me that error. So let's go ahead and turn it on and see what we get. Turn it all the way down, turn the fan all the way up. I'm gonna go ahead and run the stopwatch in the background here just to make sure that it does what it's supposed to do. I've run it for about 15 minutes now, as cold as I can get it. Uh, fan level is four. I, I ran it at five for a little bit, but it's starting to blow a lot of water off of the condenser. It's pretty humid this morning, as you can see. Even off the fittings here, it's running a lot of water. And this is the first time that I've seen the drain tube actually pour water out of it, so. 
Uh, that tells me it's working good. I wish I would have done that sooner. That's all I can say. Uh, it's probably been about three and a half months since I originally put the AC on here. I have used it for a couple of hours, and like I said, the air conditioning would cycle off, so when it was 100 degrees outside, it'd give you a little reprieve, but it really wouldn't cool the cab down. So now that I've run it for a good solid 15 minutes, it cooled the cab down, and I'm super pleased. You know, today it's only 80 degrees. When it warms up again, it gets, you know, 95, 100 degrees. I'll go ahead and give it a try again just to make sure that the additional air temperature outside uh, doesn't cause it to draw a higher amperage. But for now, it's doing the trick. Uh, let's go around back here again just to make sure everything is oak okay and everything is uh, still intact. No issues. Fill the belt just to make sure it's not really hot, any friction, anything like that. So everything's in place. Wanted to show you as well, as far as the outside unit goes here, it was a nice dark red when I installed it about three months ago. Now it's pretty sun faded. I don't know if that's gonna become an issue in time. Is it gonna get brittle? But for now, it's just discoloration, so I'm not super concerned with it. The main thing I'm not worried about cosmetics is that it stays cool. And uh, this was the trick. I wish I did it much earlier. Before I did the alternator, what I did is I swapped out the battery because it comes with a no-name, just lead-acid type battery. And I went to a 100 amp hour uh, lithium ion type of battery that I got off of Amazon. And I was really hoping that that would resolve the power issue because I thought it was more of just a power regulation um, type of an issue. I figure a larger amp hour battery uh, would have resolved it. It helped it run just a little bit longer, but ultimately it's just the amperage. It draws too much and the battery can only maintain it for so long. So the alternator was the trick. I'll go ahead and I'll put a link down below. So if you are interested in doing this same conversion on your Mini X, you can go ahead and get this AC system with an upgraded alternator and you should be in business. I procrastinated way too long before I did this. Uh, ultimately, a couple of y'all were commenting, saying, hey, have you upgraded the alternator yet? And I said, you know what, it's time to do it. So I uh, bit the bullet, it wasn't that expensive, like I said, just over $100. And realistically, since you don't have to grind the alternator, it's just a, a slight correction on that upper adjustment arm, it's 30 minutes tops and you're in business. So uh, if you're gonna take the time to do the AC unit, that takes quite a few hours, do the alternator, save yourself the headache. Uh, the one that's put on here from the manufacturer, it just doesn't have the amperage to make it run like it should. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Again, whole reason I did this, you guys provided me the motivation to get out here and get it done, and I'm glad. I really appreciate you guys joining me today. Until the next one, we'll see you.